and be tempted with what I like. Chocolate, you can't. That doesn't tell me. And Satan knows what you like. The devil knows what tantalizes your flesh. So when you walk in the spirit, as the Bible says, you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Are you still in Galatians chapter 6? We're almost done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look with me at verse 22. <laughs> but the fruit of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have did what? Crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Put to death the flesh and the affections of the flesh and the lust thereof. You can't stop it. I said this before. The Bible says bring every thought captive. The Bible lets us know, and I said this that you can't stop thoughts from coming. And don't let anyone try to condemn you with, you know, um, with what you're thinking. You can't stop thoughts from coming. But you can stop thoughts from festering in your head by healing to the spirit, by beginning to quote the word of God over that and, and meditate on the word of God day and night. Just like you can't stop birds from flying over your head, but you can stop them from making a nest in your hair. Amen. I don't have that problem no more. <laughs> but you can stop them from making it, but you can't stop a thought from coming. Satan will throw a thought in your, in, your, in your face. I said it here, and, and, I, and I love to do this. We have all of you women out there, from the least to the greatest, are beautiful. All of you. Especially my mama sitting there, Mama Jane. She is so beautiful. All of you are beautiful. You know, one time a guy, a, a, a pretty girl passed by. This when I was in the army. And I looked over at her. Oh, you're a Christian. You just seeing. You looked at that girl. And I said, you idiot. That's not what the Bible says. I said, if I saw a nice car pass by, what am I going to do? What are you going to look at? If we were walking and I saw a nice flower on a plant, what are you going to do? You're going to look at it. So you don't sin because you look at somebody. But Jesus said, when a man looks at a woman to lust after her, in other words, to desire to have her, and start imagining in his mind the things that he or she can do with that other person, then you have committed adultery or fornication in your heart already. You have actually physically, in God's eye, did the deed. But that's why the Bible tells us to cast down imagination. Cast down. That's not to say don't have an imagination, because it's through imagination that we create all these fine things that we have today. But imagination that exalt it itself against the knowledge of God. When it exalts itself, in other words, God's word says something. But your imagination is saying, well, you know, the world says it's okay. The lust of my flesh says, well, I desire it. So Nike said, if it feels good, do it. Just do it. No, Nike said, just do it. Somebody else said, if it feels good, do it. Just do it. Man, if we did everything we felt like doing, there'd be a lot of dead people in this world around me. Because sometimes I feel like training some folks. <laughs> Especially when I was a teacher. You, you parents that I've taught your kids don't get upset. Genevieve was one of my first students from my first class when I first got to Somerset High School in 19, and, uh, uh, 2003. And, and she's here today and, and as one of the members of our church. She ought to be glad. I didn't feel like strangling her. But she was such a sweet girl. She was a sweet girl. Always and still is. That's why she's one of my daughters. My favorite. Amen. Now, what she do to you at home? Now, tell me about it later, Kevin. We'll sit in counseling. But, but he says, walk in the spirit, so you won't fulfill 
Verse 16. Etch this scripture in your memory. Walk in the spirit so you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Scripture says, cast down imagination. And everything, every high thing, and everything that will try to exalt itself. In other words, to put itself up against the knowledge of God, of what you know about God. And that's what the world is doing. Love not the world, neither the things of the world. For the things that are in the world are the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. See, when you get the world's way in you, then you're going to act the world's way. But when you get God's way, remember, be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts a good man. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth to. If you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. If you sow to the spirit, you're going to reap life everlasting. Walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Not in the flesh. We still in Galatians chapter 6, chapter 5. Look with me at verse, verse 25. If we live in the spirit, oh, this is good. Matter of fact, verse 23. After meeting his temperance, verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh and the affections thereof. If we live in the spirit, let us also do what? Walk in the spirit. Let us do what? Walk, Walk in the spirit. The Bible says in Romans 8 that though whosoever uh, 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 is in the spirit of God, who has the, are the sons of God? He that is led by the spirit of God are the sons of God. Walk in the spirit. And verse, go to chapter 6, verse 7 again. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sow, that shall he also reap. You'll reap that. Last verse and we close. Go to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. And Wednesday night Bible students, I saved some for Wednesday night. I'm not going to try to preach it all. Romans chapter 13. Are you there? Look with me at verse 14, the last verse of the chapter. Matter of fact, oh man, this is all good. Some of the other scriptures are hollering at me. Say something about me, say something about me, but I'm I'm just going to stay right. Verse 14. But put on. When you get up in the morning, dress yourself. Don't walk around the world naked. Dress yourself. But put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Stop making provision for the flesh. Stay away from it. If, you know, there's certain things I know I, I, I can't get myself involved in because I know what tempts me. There's certain places I don't go without my wife. I don't go, look, I have no business, I don't care how much I like the water, I don't have no business on the beach without my wife. It's just too many pretty young women walking past. And, and uh, I'm looking at the flowers, but then Satan start putting things in your mind. I cast down the imagination, but what I need to do, I need to also pray that prayer that's prayed in the Bible. Lord, put a, put a guard over my eyes. Put a guard over my eyes. Because the eyes are the windows to the soul. And the soul consists your mind, your will, and your emotion. And what you see can attract you and draw you away. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And then when somebody questions you on it, you get all indignant. Huh, well, well, no, huh, yeah, no, well, well, who are you to judge me? Now, now you're walking in pride. Don't judge me. And most people that say that are already guilty. 
Say, I don't judge you, but the very word that you say you believe has judged you already. I don't judge you. I have no heaven or hell to put anyone in. But I'm going to do a message coming out later on judging. Y'all be surprised what the word of God says about judging. Everybody quote that one scripture. Judge not, lest ye be judged for with the same judgment that you judge with, you're going to be judged with. Yeah, that is in the scripture. But you know the Lord does tell us to judge. We ought to judge every matter. And it even tells us to judge situations and sometimes judge people's matter. But that's coming up at another time. It's been festering in me. God just haven't released me to give it yet. But there's a kind of judgment that no one should do. I should never say, brother, you've sinned, you're going to hell. No, I don't have a heaven or hell to put anybody in. No, I don't. I can't condemn anyone. And as Jesus says, does any man condemn you? Neither do I condemn you. Then he said, go and sin no more. Amen. Walk in the spirit. So we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Get dressed when you wake up and put on the Lord Jesus Christ. And make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Get dressed in the morning. Start your day off with Jesus. And then when, when, when Satan comes, submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil. And he'll flee. He'll flee. But if you're not dressed, if you don't have, as Sister Harrison said earlier this morning, if you don't have the whole armor on, you can't quench those fiery darts. Get dressed. Walk in the Spirit. Let's pray. Father God.